liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence in honor of all those who have fought for our country and continue to do so today. Thank you. All right, the clerk will now call the roll. And the clerk tonight is none other than yours truly. So go easy on me. Mr. Drummy. What's that, Mr. Drummy? Can you hear him, Mr. Yeah. Welder? Mr. Drummy, I'm going to mark you as present. Mr. Froyo. Yeah. Mr. Gray. Here. Yeah. Mr. Iavino. Here. Yeah. Miss Luong. Here. Mr. McCarthy. Here. Miss Batafora. Here. Mr. Weldy. Here. Superintendent Noriega Murphy. You want me to log out and log back in? Here. And myself here. What do you think? I have a future? Oh, yes. Do we have a quorum sufficient to conduct business? We will now proceed to who we should probably add to the role, and that is Danielle Najmi from Rosetta Languages. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, ya Sayyid al Amda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it is always a pleasure to be here to provide our interpretation services as usual. And uh, we've now added to our team, Jody and Sharon, who will be who are providing the ASL interpretation right now. Um, the rest of us interpreters will do our brief uh, introduction in each of the languages to explain to folks how to get on the language channels before we activate them. Um, I will start with Arabic. Assalamu alaikum. اسمي دانيال وانا سكون المترجم للغة العربية الليلة اذا اردتم الاستماع للترجمة فيمكنكم الضغط على رمز الكرة الارضية في اسفل الشاشة واختيار اللغة العربية او Arabic اذا كنت على هاتف محمول فاضغط على ثلاث نقط ثم اختيار الترجمة باللغات او interpretation ثم اللغة العربية Arabic ثم تم او دن شكرا I will now pass it to Magda for Spanish Thank you Daniel Hola a todos, mi nombre es Magdalena Gómez y voy a estar interpretando para español. En unos momentos vamos a activar los canales con diferentes idiomas y para elegir el suyo, si es que está conectado desde una computadora, por favor haga clic en el icono de globo que va a aparecer en la parte de abajo de su pantalla y escoja español. Y si es que estás desde un teléfono móvil, haz clic en los tres puntos verticales que aparecerán a la derecha de tu pantalla y escoge interpretación de idiomas. Luego escoge español y luego termina. I'll pass it to uh, Najila. Najla, you're on mute. You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, no more is Najla Bonet. Um, I'm going to put it in the middle of the day. I'm going to put it in the pour aller pour avant au bail pour interprétation la poue en lait la chanel là la peser et c'est côté qui qui dit qui gagne trois boutons hein trois petits boutons la peser sur lui et puis la prend chanel pour interprétation que la langue nous parle là c'est créole haïtien et puis que nous nous appelons Prenez nos no, no positions pour choisir la langue que nous parlons. Next question. Daniel. Thank you. Ah, I will 
Yeah, I ahead. have a question. Sometimes it says French. Um, it will say know. Haitian Creole. Haitian Creole. Haitian Creole. This one Haitian Creole. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Say Creole. I say Pupunbula. Okay. Merci. Thank you. And now let's pass it over to Raisa for Portuguese. Thank you. Olá, boa noite. Meu nome é Raíssa, você é intérprete português hoje. É, se você, daqui a pouco a gente vai iniciar a função de interpretação. Se você estiver participando de um computador, você vai ver um globo na parte de baixo da sua tela. Por favor, escolha esse globo e escolha português e depois clique finalizado. É, se você estiver participando de um telefone celular, aí você vai ver três pontinhos na parte de baixo e também você vai clicar em cima dele, você vai escolher português e vai escolher Olá. finalizado, tá bom? Obrigada. Um, I will now pass it um, to... I lost track of the order, but if we have Vietnamese, maybe to Vietnamese? Yes, thank you. Good evening. Xin chào quý vị. Tên tôi là Lan. Tôi sẽ là người phiên dịch tiếng Việt cho quý vị hôm nay. Một khi chúng tôi kích hoạt tính năng phiên dịch, xin vui lòng bấm vào bị tường quả địa cầu sẽ xuất hiện phía cuối màn hình của quý vị và chọn ngôn ngữ là tiếng Việt, Vietnamese, để được nghe phiên dịch trực tiếp. Nếu quý vị đang dùng điện thoại thông minh, xin bấm vào ba dấu chấm, rồi chọn ngôn ngữ phiên dịch, language interpretation, rồi chọn tiếng Việt, Vietnamese. Sau đó là xong. Done. Xin cảm ơn quý vị. Thank you. I now pass it on to Mandarin. Ready? Okay, thank you. Uh, 大家好,我是您的普通话翻译,喂,如果你需要普通话翻译的话,请你点击屏幕下方的地球仪,然后选择中文这个普通话Mandarin频道,然后就可以进入这个频道听翻译。如果您使用的是手机或者平板电脑,
With that being said, public comment is now open. And as always, Mr. Weldy will help us administer. All right, if uh, anybody would like to participate in public comment, uh, please the raise hand feature um, on Zoom, or you can type your name and address into the Q&A. Um, and it looks like we don't have any telephone participants. As of right now, we have no one uh, raising. All right. All right. No one in the queue, Mr. Waldai? No one in the queue for public comment. All right, let's move forward then, everyone. So the next item uh, will be. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Employees request for non resident student enrollment. Let's hear from our superintendent on what this is. Hi, good evening. The request is from one of our staff members to see if we can allow her child to attend the BB school. Uh, we are going to uh, go back with the school committee team mm. that actually supersede, uh, supervises mm. or oversees that policy. And we are going to get back to the family, hopefully by the end of the week or in the middle of next week. All right, there you have it. Any questions of the members? Ms. Spadafora, and then Mr. Welbeck. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to clarify on this request. So it's gonna go to a policy and procedure subcommittee meeting. And then based on the policy written, it does have to come back to full committee for a vote. So, I just want to, Oriega Murphy said, you know, within a week or so, but our next meeting is not until August 30th. Um, so essentially that would be when it comes back to a full vote. Thank you. As I learned the, uh, thank you. As I learned the steps and procedures. So thank you for that. <laughs> I, I just thank wanted you. to just, you know, make note and make sure everybody was aware of the actual timeline. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bettifor. Over to Mr. Weldyke. Uh, I was just going to make a motion to refer to policy, so I, I can wait if anybody has any other questions, but uh, I'll have to make a I'll motion. second that. All right, let's get it up. Uh, Mr. Weldy, you're motioning, seconded by Mr. Iavino. So any questions on the motion to question. refer? Mr. Drummy. Yeah, not, not so much the motion to refer. Uh, Jen, how many do we have? Uh, in district right now, are there any openings as yeah, far as allowing students in? Yeah, so me and Mr. Weld, I spoke this morning and um, we do currently have openings. Um, okay, that's so fine. It, it can we're, not at the we're not at the maximum yet. We're not at the maximum. Um, so it can definitely be taken up by policy and procedure that's just fine. to make sure that they're within the policy that we've written mm -hmm. um, yeah. before it comes back, so. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Ms. Spada, thank you, Mr. Drummy. Ms. Spadafora, can I just stay with you for a second so the, the larger audience that's watching, can you uh, explain what you're referring to within the policy on the question that Mr. Drummy just asked you? So we have a cap on the number of students from outside, is that it? That can be in our district at any one time? Correct, Mr. Chair. So when the policy was written, we wrote it with a um, cap of five students um, that okay. could come into the district, among other um, policy yep. items criteria. that, um, criteria exactly, that they have to meet, um, you know, with having it in by a certain date, having a um, certain amount of time within the, the district, so on and so forth. So, um, Therefore, it goes to policy, and if it uh, if it you know meets criteria, it could come back out. If it doesn't meet criteria, then it won't come back out um, based on you know the policy written. All right, very good. All right, so any further questions? 
So one more time, Mr. Walden made a motion to refer this to policy and procedure subcommittee. It was seconded by Mr. Iovino. Let me just write that down as the clerk. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The ayes have it, that carries unanimously. Next order of business, face covering policy update. So before we go to our superintendent, for the members, the question this evening is whether or not we want to, to continue with the policy that we have had in place since last year. So that is the question tonight. Do we we want to reaffirm or do we want to go in a different direction? So with that being said, let's ask our superintendent her thoughts on what we should do. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe that there's a sense of urgency to revise and update the um, face mask policy as we have to uh, start getting ready for a school opening and that is a key component to inform parents caregivers uh as soon as possible so i would love to um see what would be the outcome uh making sure that we follow the procedures about safety and the guidelines uh according to cdc um so the policy that we created last year and i appreciate that for taking the time to revise it today and hopefully by the end of the day, we will have an answer so I can put it in all my uh, information given uh, that I have to send to uh, families, even though they already receive information about uh, back to school days. But uh, thank you uh, again for taking the time to revise this policy so we can update it and start getting ready for September 1st. All right, so everybody understand the question on this policy. Let's take some questions about it. Uh, Mr. Iovino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, have we had any direction from the our, our own Board of Health Director, Mr. Chris Webb? Uh, he was our point person last year um, with information directly from the state, um, and he guided our, our, uh, our method of operation. So I was wondering if we've had any current conversations or directions from um, Mr. Webb? Yes. Last night, the Board of Health met at 6.30 p.m. here at City Hall, of which I attended. And they subsequently sent a letter to us this, this morning. And I'll read the pertinent parts. It is important that we protect the most vulnerable among us, and currently they are school-aged children not yet eligible for vaccination and the unvaccinated. The Malden Board of Health would recommend that all students, staff, and administrators always be masked while inside the public school buildings and on school buses. Exceptions would be when the students are outside during recess or another event, another event and while eating. So that was the Board of Health in a unanimous recommendation last night. So I, I guess my, my, uh, my point would be that if we've followed uh, the direction of the Board of Health from uh, last year, why would we deviate from that this year and, and not just fall in line with what they're saying? Since the Delta variant seems to not want to go away. Well, let's find that out. Let's see what other people think. Because, okay. uh, you know, let's go to Ms. Spadafore and then I see Mr. Welday has his hand. Ms. Spadafore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess to um, play devil's advocate to Mr. Iavino's question, um, last year when we wrote or implemented this policy, we did have a mask mandate by the governor of the state. Um, so to answer your question, what is the difference? There is no mask mandate. Um, at the moment, um, the lovely um, governor and commissioner has now left it to us to make those decisions, whereas we were kind of following um, pretty much protocol last year. So just to, you know, 
show the difference in where our decision making comes from. Yeah, and to uh, Ms. Batafora's point, Mr. Ravino, we have been on the phone with both the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, as well as state officials within the governor's executive branch, trying to see whether or not that would change leading up to the return of school and indications from both, they will not. They will make the recommendation, it will be highly recommended, but as Ms. Fatafora outlined, it ultimately will be left to us. I understand that. I guess my, my opinion, if, if we're asking, if we're going to uh, decide what we wanna do, I wanna protect, as the letter states from uh, the uh, Mr. Webb, want to protect those most vulnerable. So I would support the policy to allow, to make our children, I would support the policy stated in his letter about the wearing of masks in school, on school property and on school transportation. All right, let's find out from the rest. Uh, Mr. Weldike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, you know, my, my personal opinion is I tend to agree with Mr. Ivino. I think that, um, particularly in, in a time, I mean, we find ourselves in a familiar situation where we're uh, being left as 351 cities and towns to fend for ourselves when we don't get any direction from DESE or the state. And, you know, it, it's just another example of, of passing the buck. And, and so we'll be the responsible ones. And so a part of me, I, I do feel like we should continue um, the policy in place. A part of me thinks we should also uh, just for consistency sake, uh, make a friendly amendment to it that includes pre-Ks because we will have a robust pre-K program this year and last year we did not. And so the policy says in it uh, that it's recommended at pre-K but it's not necessarily required. So if we're, if we're going to require K through 12, part of me thinks for consistency sake, we just uh, amend and, and include the whole, the whole piece. Um, and I think I feel that way mostly because of the lack of alternative options and supports as a district that we have. Um, you know, and, and I think families out there are getting, getting used to, and I'm sure the superintendent has fielded many of these questions. The fact that, you know, we aren't allowed to have a remote option. We aren't allowed to offer alternatives. We aren't allowed to, to do what we feel is best for um, our district or our kids per the state. Um, unless it's a decision they don't want to make. Um, so, you know, because that decision was taken away from us, I feel like it's incumbent on us to, to do what we can to protect uh, those in our care. Um, so that's, I, that's what I feel. I do think if uh, I would offer a friendly amendment to, um, you know, revise the policy we voted on in September of 2020 to, to include pre-K rather than just as a recommendation, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I right, support that. Uh, yeah, let me just, uh, Mr. Ivino, hear from some other members who haven't spoken yet. Uh, let's go to Ms. Luong. What do you think? I'm in agreement with both Adam and um, Mr. Ivino. I think it comes down, you know, to a safety issue. I think that, you know, we have children that are immune compromised, and um, you know, and especially we have them at the high school level. And I just feel like a mask mandate. And we have teachers that are, you know, have, you know, certain medical issues. And I, I just feel like safety should be fighting on the safe, on the side of safety and go. And I agree with um, the friendly amendment as well to go pre-K <coughs> right, through, right through grade 12 <coughs> with a mask mandate. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Long. Anybody else? Mr. Drummond. No, I agree. I mean, like Adam said, regardless of, they give us guidance or not, it just makes common sense for all of our children that they're our most valuable resource. So yeah, we should protect them. And I don't see any problem with having a mask mandate saying, yes, it's for their protection. And kids are easy. Kids, they're not like adults. You put a mask on them, they, th they think they're playing a game. They're fine. I don't think there'll be any problem with the mask mandate. I really don't. So I, I agree with it. All right. Anybody else before we vote? Mr. McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just in agreement with everyone else regarding the um, I'm asking for, for the students, but um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to um, maybe we reevaluate um, something in the policy where um, we revisit this to see what the, uh, the virus data looks like. 
um, after say like a month or two going into the school year. Um, I don't know if anybody would be in agreement with that, but um, I think that's necessary just to see what the virus data looks like um, down the road. So, I mean, at this point, I don't know if I should make a motion for that or if I should hold off until uh, a few other people talk about it. Yeah, let's let's hold that if you wouldn't mind, Mr. McCarthy. Let's see what people think. If there are any other comments, Mr. Porio. I also agree with Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also agree with Mr. McCarthy that maybe we should set a date two or three months ahead, you know, like in October, September, October, to see how it's going and revisit this. Okay. Policy. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, let's see, Mr. Welday, then, uh, then Ms. Spadafore. Sure, I would just love to express my support for Mr. McCarthy's comment. I think that's a fantastic idea. I think it fits in well with uh, the way in which the superintendent has been communicating with families so far. Um, so I, th I think it, it, would, uh, it would make sense. And uh, even, even if there wasn't either a date or if, um, you know, at our school committee meetings, we had, you know, up where we are and where we think we can go. But I think that's a great idea, Rob. So that Thank you, Mr. Weldon and Ms. Spadafore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I too agree. And I think um, that stands for almost all the policies that we, we write. I think everything should be reviewed um, to make sure that it's, it's following what our vision is for the district. I do want to make note though, um, while having, a, you know, people reach out, caregivers, parents have emailed, have expressed their opinions on whether they were for masks, against masks, um, I just wanted to, as someone that um, has a special needs child myself and have spoken with many of our special needs um, parents that are reluctant um, in masks just because of the regression that they've seen um, in their own children. Um, a lot of our students are dealing with social emotional issues and having a face covering over doesn't allow them to see or see their teachers smile. It doesn't allow them to interpret um, the, the, the facial communication. So I just wanted to, to point that out that we do have, as we focus on our, um, our students, we do have a subset that are suffering wearing masks. And uh, the sooner that we're able to revise this and hopefully get those students back on track um, and being able to um, attend their their speech um, sessions and be able to um, see their peers' faces and 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 learn and understand because it's really difficult for our differently abled students to understand if um, a teacher is showing um, a smile underneath that or um, a frown um, and they may interpret things differently. So I just wanted to make that note. Okay, very good. Anybody else, Mr. McCarthy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just really quick, I actually appreciate the fact that Ms. Spadafore referred to, um, you know, speech and language pathology sessions. Um, it's very difficult, um, you know, for those kids that are having, being able to participate in those types of sessions, um, actually being able to, for the teacher, for the specialist and the student alike, to actually be able to, you know, um, successfully go within those sessions. But um, no, I appreciate the fact that she mentioned that because I did get some emails and, and calls, uh, you know, regarding speech and language pathology. So um, I appreciate that, Jen. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Uh, Mr. Luong and then Mr. Weldy. I just had a quick question um, for everyone. What are your thoughts um, on maybe giving teachers, as they're standing up in front of their classrooms, the option to not wear a mask as they're teaching their class behind their desk, several, you know, 10 feet from their students? What is everybody's thoughts on that? Would that kind of, it's certainly not going to solve the problem that um, Ms. Batafora um, alluded to, but it could, in fact, um, alleviate some of that. I just wasn't sure what everybody's thoughts were on that. Mr. Welby. 
so my comment wasn't based on Michelle's, but uh, I mean, I'll, we can jump back to that. But my comment was actually based on what um, Ms. Batafora said, and I think articulated a very meaningful point for a lot of our families and kids. And to that a conversation that we were having prior to this, um, superintendent, it might be worth checking into because I know that um, Tony and, and Pam had been working on clear masks. And, oh. and if, if we could really heavily invest, I think, in clear masks, particularly for um, our younger students, our students with special needs, people who are in your, your kind of already, yeah, okay, <laughs> then that, that would be great. I mean, it's not a solution, right? But it's a, it's a support. Yes. Superintendent, you read your hand up. Yes, um, I truly appreciate those comments. And we have been thinking about the students that need to see the facial expression of the uh, teachers. Hopefully, it's too bad we cannot do it for all the students to get the clear masks. Uh, we are going to invest on that for the teachers so students would be able to see, especially during the speech pathologist session, to make sure that they can see other faces. And if we have plexiglass, we would deploy it to those classroom, classrooms too. Um, try to keep everybody safe, but at the same time to be able to, for students to access what is uh, the services they need to receive. So thank you for your comments. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ms. Badafor and Ms. Luong, good points. Anybody else? If I might, just from the uh, chair, uh, on behalf of the entire school committee, we wanna say thank you to all those that have emailed us, that have called us. I thought all the comments were very well made and were helpful uh, to us in tonight's deliberation. And also through you, Superintendent, to all those families that participated in the surveys, uh, very insightful, a lot of good information in there. And it seemed to me one glaring point in addition to what we're discussing here this evening is you know, the maintenance and the cleanliness of the building. So I just wanna let everyone know, thanks to the, the federal government, our Congresswoman, our two US senators, the Biden administration, we are gonna be using uh, the American Rescue Plan program funding, a, a good chunk of it, to replace all of the air filtration systems across the district. So every school is going to undergo a replacement. I forget how many units there are. I think there's 25 or 30 of them. So uh, we are going to be doing that right through the school year. We've already started the ordering of it. And um, the other thing that we're going to continue to do through our public facilities department, working with Superintendent Noriega Murphy, is make sure that the air filters are replaced every other week. And um, our team will work with the school department on using the so-called fog machines, which help provide a deep clean uh, every Friday. So it's a little bit different from last year because we were in hybrid, uh, but that is the game plan. And I know that I think that was the number two point raised in those surveys. Uh, the other thing that we have been asked about as well is what will be the game plan moving forward with vaccination clinics? So our superintendent has been working closely with Mr. Webb, our director from the health department, and uh, we are going to be having a clinic uh, every Friday. And I think our superintendent, they will rotate throughout the district, if I understand it correctly. That is correct, yes. Yeah, so those will be happening uh, as well at the outset. And then the school committee has been very deliberate in that if we're gonna go back under similar type circumstances as last year, we wanna make sure that we continue with the the testing program that we had in place last year. So our superintendent, um, and we've been in close contact with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. They once again are going to help us do what we did last year when it comes to testing. So those are some of the measures that uh, we will have in place. But the one thing I will say just personally that I said just about a year ago is that our philosophy here in the mayor's office uh, pretty much right along has been better to be safe than sorry. And the one thing that we have heard loud and clear from the uh, folks up in state government and you know on these Metro mayor calls that the people we have got to reach in order to do away with mass policies and you know do away with uh, the regular testing that we were doing last year is to have more people vaccinated. So one of the reasons why I wanna 
join some of the people that spoke previous to me is that obviously zero to, I believe it's 12 years old are currently unvaccinated. Now, our director of uh, the health department has said that is going to change in the near future. Uh, I think he actually told me he's hopeful October there will be a vaccine that will reach down to that population. But until then, you know, there isn't a vaccination. So I think my personal feeling is until that happens, you know, we have to take the precautions because, you know, if something were to happen because we wanted to roll the dice, I don't think any of us on this call would could forgive ourselves for doing that. So um, I also want to remind everyone outside of the school committee meeting, we will have another COVID-19 show update Monday night at 6 p.m., which you can tune in on the city of Malden's YouTube channel or on Urban Media Arts to catch that hour long show. We'll have people from Cambridge Health Alliance, from our Board of Health, and Mr. Webb from the Health Department. So uh, that's where we are. That's my take on this. And uh, not the way we drew it up. We were hoping to be in a different position. But, you know, again, until we start vaccinating more, we have to continue to take these precautions. So if there are no other questions, uh, well, let's first take up, um, let's take up these amendments. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, from me to you, just one thing I wanted to ask. Uh, if we were to insert a date certain, uh, I just want to make sure it doesn't preclude us, you know, from three weeks from now of taking action if all of a sudden a vaccine was made available and, you know, our, a good amount of our school-age population availed themselves of it. So tell me exactly what you're suggesting we do. So, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I was just actually suggesting that um, we just set a date for, you know, um, setting a time when we could reevaluate the, the virus data and see what the numbers look like regarding, um, you know, active cases within the city, um, you know, um, anything that has to go with that. Um, but I can understand from where you're coming from with, um, you know, with vaccinations, if, if more children are getting vaccinated, then, you know, the, the numbers may actually go down. So um, I was thinking probably possibly sometime in October, um, you know, if, if, if that's, if that's um, the will of, of anyone else here on the committee to actually reevaluate the virus data and see what it looks like. And then we can, you know, look at the policy again, but that's where I was going. Yeah, Superintendent, uh, to you, I forget the cycle that they're on, but uh, on your end, is the state releasing data? I, I thought it was on a weekly basis. How are you receiving the data on what's happening out there? Via email. And yeah, actually, and is it weekly or bi weekly or monthly? Bi weekly, uh, and our nurse, the school uh, nurse for the district, is the one that receives all that information. She also joins meetings. So I would be glad to send it to you on a regular basis as soon as we get it. I can send it to you. Uh, we can do a presentation for the team, but I can just send it to you in a re as soon as we get it. Uh, so you have really uh, updated information on a weekly basis. Does that work, Mr. McCarthy? So oh, yeah, that sounds per yeah, that sounds perfect because um, I just want to see what, you know, I think it's extremely important that we actually take a look at that, the, you know, the, the facts and the data, yeah. right? So um, no, I'd appreciate that, uh, Superintendent. Yeah, so what she'll do then, if they're okay with you, Mr. McCarthy, she'll just start uh, sending along to us the data that's being sent down by the state every two weeks. And then we that's, can review it perfect. and act if, if needed at our meeting. Sounds perfect. So Ms. Pettifor, you had your hand raised, I'm sorry. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with the frequency that we do receive the data on top of the information we're receiving from Maria Louise um, weekly, I'd like to actually see this um, as a standing agenda item on our uh, monthly okay. school committee meetings until we are, are at a, a comfortable place in this pandemic where we don't have to have these discussions. So I think, you know, as a standing agenda item uh, update from the superintendent, I think uh, would be beneficial to us. Okay, any objection? She has none, so we'll do that, Ms. Bataforo, okay? Effective immediately. Now let's talk about Mr. Well. So Mr. McCarthy, you're good with that setup? No. Uh, yeah, it sounds perfect. Okay, let's go to Mr. Weldy's suggestion. Um, 
Mr. Weldy, do you want to make that friendly amendment first before we affirm the policy? Sure. Um, and let me I'll pull up just so I have the language in front of me. Uh, so this is in the second paragraph of the current policy, last sentence. It says the district shall require this for all students in grades K to 12. It will be strongly recommended and encouraged for pre-K. My friendly amendment would just be we revise those two sentences and just say the district shall require this for all students in grades pre-K through 12. Okay, uh, so that's a, an that's a motion, Mr. Weldy. Yes. Okay, is there a second to it for discussion? Second. Mr. Drummy raised his hand, so now it's been seconded. It's on the floor. Let's take some points or discussion on that. Uh, Mr. McCarthy. It's not necessarily to the uh, to the changes. I have some additional ones, so um, when necessary, we can actually just uh, discuss. It was a very minor, uh, Mr. Chair. So. I just wanted to make that known, so. Yep. Anybody else on the amendment? Okay, one second, let me get this down. Okay, Mr. Welder, you made the motion, seconded by Mr. Drummy. Clerk will call the roll, clerk being me. Mr. <laughs> Drummy. Yes. Mr. Froyo. Yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Iovino. Yes. Ms. Luong. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Spatafora. No. Mr. Weldy. Yes. And myself, yes. Okay, that carries eight to one. Okay, any other motions, Mr. McCarthy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't know if there's um, any possibility that, that Adam could uh, pull up the, um, the policy on the yep. screen. Because I'm, yeah. The superintendent, the superintendent actually turned it into a slide. We we'd never, we never. Would you have mine, Mr. McCarthy? Which uh, so the which the um, it was actually done on the part for the um, the physical education classes. Um, yeah. So this this slide right here it says additionally face masks or face coverings will not be required when appropriate social distancing is enforced. Um, so I think it should read um, where it says during physical education classes, I think it should read after that outside. So we'll add in the word outside and then, and then um, delete, um, you know, potentially bullet point number four says while outside, because that's kind of looking at it in a general stance. Um, I don't know how anyone else feels if you want to add in the word outside after during physical education classes. Well, let me ask the superintendent. I assume while outside is a catch-all for events not listed here, right? So if they go out to you know, visit a particular area of the city or something like that, is that what while outside means, superintendent? Well, outside and that they can keep this uh, safe distancing, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so to explain that, Mr. Ricardo, I think that means if they're going to, I don't know, see City Hall, walk by City Hall. Right. Uh, whereas the other yeah. items are explicit, you know, outdoor mass breaks, eating or drinking, physical, physical education. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, I was actually just going through the policy within the last couple of days and I just, I saw that. And the last point, I mean, it was very general, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think outside should be after during physical education classes outside, um, obviously when distancing is, is obviously appropriate, but um, it should be in writing. That's what I feel. Um, All right, so. let's ask for some help, Mr. McCarthy. So anybody else want to weigh in on this? Uh, because I presume 
Face masks or face coverings will not be required when appropriate social distancing is enforced. So I assume physical education classes taking place in the gym, I, I think is what that means. Any, anybody else help us? Mr. McCarthy and I on that? Mr. Waldai, I see your hand raised. I mean, that's how I read it as well. So uh, I guess to, to the superintendent, um, if they can keep a, an appropriate physical distance while in a gymnasium, are we allowing them to do that unmasked? I would actually prefer for them to wear the mask inside, indoors, um, even during physical education uh, because of the ear. So um, I believe I would love to see the, this to apply for outdoors, physical education and outdoors activities instead of uh, inside, indoors. So then Mr. McCarthy's uh, on to something then. Was that right now, this, yeah, this means it's in the gym, I think, is the way I read it. So, Mr. Chair, just really quick, I just I like I said before, I think I think we should add in the word during physical education classes outside okay. to bullet point three. Yeah. Um, because like the superintendent just said, obviously indoor PE classes, they're gonna be wearing masks. So, right. um, yep. so I think it should be in writing. I mean, just for, you know, transparency. So, okay. All right. What's people, what do people think of that? So it'd be, uh, Mr. McCarthy during outdoor physical education classes or during physical education. I think it should, I think it should read during classes, physical outdoors. education classes outside. outside. Okay. All right. So he's got that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second, by Second. Mr. Well, for purposes of discussion. Hold on, I gotta write this down. Uh, so can someone uh, hit the stop share so I can see everyone? Yes. Any questions on that? Makes sense to everyone? Okay, let me uh, call the roll. Uh, hold on one second. So pretend you're going to have to give me a stipend. I know where you're coming from. <laughs> Outside. Motion was made by Mr. McCarthy. And it was seconded by Mr. Weldy. All right, let me call the roll. Mr. Drummy. Yes. Mr. Froyo. Yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Iovino. Yes. Ms. Luong. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Spadafora. No. Mr. Weldy. Yes. Myself, yes. So that is eight to one. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? If not, we'll entertain a motion, uh, I believe it's to affirm, unless I have that wrong, the rest of the policy, right, Mr. Welder? I believe so. That seems like the correct term. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Iovino. All right, uh, no other questions on that? I'll call the roll then. Mr. Drummy. Yes. Mr. Froyo. Yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Iovino. Yes. Ms. Luong. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Spadafora. Now. Mr. Weldy. Yes. And myself, yes. That carries eight to one as amended. Okay, uh, that brings us to the end of our agenda. We'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Second. Mr. Drum, seconded by Mr. Iovino. Second.
All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. The school committee is here by adjourned. Good evening. Good evening, Thank all. You. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Adam. And thank you, Daniel. Good night. Kenneth, this is Sharon speaking. Do you remember me? Oh God, this thing keeps moving. I think she's gone. Hi everybody. Nice <laughs> Bye, to meet everybody. you all. Take care, be safe. Bye-bye.